Welcome, welcome, come on in. I hope you don't mind me welcoming you to my bedroom, but I really wanted to show you this, that, this, and these in here holding it all together were all 3D printed. It's all strung up on a length of PVC pipe that we had lying around. And so basically for just a couple of dollars, we made a custom designer curtain rod to hold up our blackout curtains. And I wanna show you a little bit about how that was done. So come on. This project began as a problem. The problem was we had these blackout curtains that we wanted to hang up, but we didn't have a curtain rod to do it with. And we didn't really have a whole lot of money for buying a curtain rod because you can't support a family on demo unit 3D printers. But we did have a length of small PVC pipe that could go inside the curtain. But hanging up a curtain with PVC pipe, that's kind of not looking good and we still would need some hooks for hanging it on the wall. Fortunately we also had 3D printers and some mad skills on our hand to fix this problem. Now the first thing I needed to do was figure out the design so I whipped out my handy dandy notebook and I brainstormed a bunch of ideas including ideas that were kind of two-part one side was the beginning of an idea and the other side was the ending of it and I just let the ideas flow as I went I didn't hold back any ideas but in the end it was this little one in the corner that kind of stuck the idea of doing a treble and bass clef on either side of the curtain rod. See, my wife sings with the soprano voice of an angel and me, well, that is saying bass. But I do know my way around music. I can read music and stuff, so, and I can follow along in a choir. I'm not worthless when it comes to music. We've got that in common, so it seemed like a good theme for our curtain rod. So after that, it was time to go to the computer and do some modeling. The first thing I needed to do was figure out the hooks. Now, these hooks actually, I started the design of them in Fusion 360. It was another one of my attempts to learn and teach myself Fusion 360, and it went okay. It, it I got this far in Fusion 360, but then my wife said, can we have some half-size ones for the middle of it? Now, half size isn't too bad to do, except for the fact that these holes need to remain in there. And so at this point, I took it into Blender. I know, I kind of gave up on Fusion 360, but I was able to scale these down in edit mode without touching this part. So once the curtain rods were done, it was time to start modeling the ends. Now, to do this, I actually used Bezier curves and I used the various radiuses of it to make it thicker and thinner as it went around and the curve that I went on this I just drew this curve shape and used that as the bevel object in my curve right here so by doing that it creates a three-dimensional curve with that shape but you'll notice it goes up and down like a lot and that's because I was using the radius to make it thicker and thinner but radius is just radius it's not x radius or y radius and so I had a lot of mess in there that I needed to clean up when I added it to the pipe now you also notice that the pipe for this is flat on the bottom which means that when it's hanging up on the wall the back of it is not completely round and yet, because it's up against a wall, nobody ever notices that. And in fact, after I printed this, it was a little bit too narrow. I had missed my measurement, so I just had to wrap some masking tape around here to thicken it up a little bit when I jammed it into the pole. And again, because it was hidden inside the pole, nobody could see. Same thing with the base clef. I used a Bezier curve and used the same bevel object. Now, in this case, I got it much thinner as it got to the end, which means that when we got to the final piece, it actually goes up above, but that wasn't a problem when I printed it. The design was done, it was ready to go, and it was time to take it to the printer. 
I printed it out in ASA so that I could smooth it out with acetone and get it looking as pretty and professional as possible with the least amount of work and make it look like a clean and professional custom made project in the end that really only cost us a couple of dollars and a couple of hundred dollars worth of 3D printing equipment. But never mind that. It still was a fun project and I'm really happy with the way the final result turned out. And I hope that you have enjoyed learning about this project. Thank you to my Patreon backers. Your support is more needed than ever. Low Poly Dino Kickstarter is coming up soon. So thank you very much for your support on that. And remember that people on the mailing list get an exclusive STL after the Kickstarter launches. So be sure to look forward to that. And as always, I want to say thank you very much for watching Safety First. See you next time.